Welcome back. Today we're taking a look at one of the most powerful inside fighting positions available to boxers, kickboxers, and mixed martial artists. It's easy to take, difficult to shake, and it sets up a whole range of safe punches, control options, and inside fighting techniques. Once you understand this position, you'll start to see it everywhere. It is at the core of some of the greatest inside fighting games in history, and it literally makes it possible to land uppercuts, hooks, and body shots with your eyes closed. If it's good enough for the likes of Roberto Duran, Riddick Bowe, Ricky Hatton, and Gennady Golovkin, then it definitely deserves a place in your arsenal. And even if you're not an inside fighter, you should still know what your opponents can do from this position, because if you don't, you're in for some nasty surprises. Before you can use and abuse this position, you will need to understand the following key components. First, let's talk about using your head. To make this work, you'll need to get comfortable with the idea of gluing your forehead to the opponent and exerting different levels of pressure depending on what you're trying to do. To begin, get slightly lower than your opponent and off to the right of their center line, then press your third eye into their left cheek, using your forehead to fill the gap their lead hand would take in a closed guard position. Next, we turn our attention to the hips and torso. Your hips need to be low and close to the opponents, while the torso should be angled forward to drive your third eye into their cheek. With regards to hand position, you have a few different options, but they're all geared towards the same goal, which is to stop your opponent from punching and keep you in control. With the left or lead hand, you can look for any of the following traps or tie-ups. Number one, glove on glove contact. In an orthodox versus orthodox matchup, you would place your left hand on top of their right glove. From there, you can push and pull, or simply cover the hand to trap, and keep that punch offline. Number two, shoulder control. Place your lead hand on the opponent's rear shoulder. From here, you'll feel them punching long before you see any visible tells, so you can react accordingly. You can also press into the crook of their elbow, or push the bicep to stop punches from that side. Number three, forearm and L guard traps. Either block their backhand with the forearm, or if possible, lay it across both hands for a two for one trap. This option sets up the chicken wing as long as you make sure to keep the hips close. If you're interested in more L guard theory, please refer to this video I made for the team over at Short Boxing. Number four, the collar tie. You can take a collar tie from this position with or without grabbing behind the head. This sets up a bunch of techniques for mixed martial artists and nakamoi, but it's useful for pure boxers too, allowing us to control the opponent's posture, hold them in position for the uppercut, and use the dangling elbow to block or interfere with any punches coming to the body on that side. Number five, the underhook. Again, this will open up a lot in other combative sports, but it's also useful in pure boxing. Not only does this disable attacks from that side, but we can also use it to lift the opponent out of their stance and break their base. Just know that this does limit your ability to punch or push off with the lead hand from this position, although it does set up the shoulder bump technique that we will discuss a little later. I go there, bang. And a little nudge to make a gap. Number six, the overhook. There are plenty of good reasons to grab an overhook in the clinch in any combat sport, but for our purposes today, all you need to know is that the overhook will stop that arm from punching, make it easier to angle out on that side, and give you another sneaky way to do harm, Ricky Hatton style. Sometimes they used to get in and like, you know, hold him. They say, you hold him with one, you know, with one arm, we're using one, the other. So I used to grab him with one arm and squeeze it till the arm went fucking green. <laughs> So that's six different options for the lead hand, all with different pros and cons and follow-up potential, but all equally good at preventing your opponent from punching. With the right hand, it's a lot simpler. Since we're usually trying to set up punches with the rear hand from here, you don't want to get too bogged down with underhooks and your head will be in the way of you getting a collar tie. Instead, just focus on trapping their lead hand with glove-on-glove -glove contact or by pressing into their bicep or the crook of the elbow. Whichever option you choose, try to keep your hand on top so that you can punch freely while stopping them from doing the same. That said, if you want to dig to the body with the left hand, you can grab an overhook and squeeze, just like Tricky Ricky showed us a little earlier. So that's what you need to do with the head, hips, torso, feet, and hands in order to make this position work. All of this can be practiced and developed on your own on the heavy bag before you start moving this technique up the training hierarchy and try to apply it in partner drills and live sparring situations.
Now that you understand how to take this position, let's talk about what it gets you. Here's six ways you can use this position. Number one, stay safe in the pocket with built-in defense. This position has a lot of passive built-in defense to keep you safe in the trenches. Staying low, tight to your opponent, and slightly right of center keeps you in their blind spot and out of the line of fire. Not only does your head pressure keep their eyes off target, but the angle of your body puts you around the corner from the rear hand and too close for the lead hand to punch with purpose. Thus, even if you don't want to use any of the attack options, controls, or setups this position has to offer, it's a great place to rest and run out the clock. Number two, keep punches offline with proactive defense. This position also makes it easy to work hand traps and controls as a form of proactive defense. As discussed in the last section, you can trap with glove-on-glove -glove contact or forearm pressure or control the arm by pressing into the bicep or shoulder, making it very hard for your opponent to even get his weapons out of the holster. Of course, your opponent will have the same options for traps and controls at this range, but your head position gives you a distinct advantage, pushing their eyes off target and blinding them to the hand fight. By the time they feel the pressure of the trap, you'll already be in control. Number three, score safely with reliable attack options. Several punch options are available directly from this position without having to give up your head pressure or even open an attack lane to set them up. As long as you stay low and keep your third eye glued against their cheek, you can spam the body with hooks and stabbing uppercuts from either hand with relative impunity. Your head pressure and low position will make it harder for them to mount any counter attacks and you can keep the non-punching hand on trapping duty for extra protection. Number four, control and create openings for rear-handed power shots. When you take this position, placing your head in the space their hand would occupy in a closed guard position, you now control this opening in their defense. When you want to rest, you keep it closed, but you can also open it anytime you want to land some big power shots from that side. As you've seen again and again already, you can initiate uppercuts, overhands, and short right hooks to the head from this position before you open the attack lane. Since your head is blocking the target, the opponent probably won't expect an attack on that side. But as soon as you punch, you change head slots and expose the target at the last second, surprising them with a big power shot that lands flush. Basically, you use your punch mechanics to pull your head off of the cheek, moving it from its starting position on the right side towards your left hip as the weight shifts, using your body's rotation to clear the lane right before the moment of impact. This should be pretty intuitive. You should already be changing head slots as you throw the hook overhand and uppercut. If you don't, you're upright, hittable, and easy to find up the middle. In an orthodox versus orthodox matchup, the head will slide left and slightly back. Although I usually caution against pulling back on uppercuts, in this case it is acceptable since you're initiating the punch from a head forward position where you're leaned in a bit to drive your third eye into their cheek. This means that pulling back with the shot is really more like pulling upright into a neutral position. Number five, use your head to break posture and bully your opponent around. Obviously this position makes it easy to use your hands for control, shoves, and off balances since you're right on top of the opponent with both hands already in contact for traps. But you can also use the head as a point of control, whether you want to lift the opponent out of their base or steer them around the ring. Position is everything in wrestling. Even if I don't have a, a ton of offense, if I have great positioning, no matter what he has, it's tough for this guy to score me. Underestimated most times uh, by American wrestlers, Europeans are great at this, is using your head for defense. And defense is head, hands, hips, right? So I'm kind of leading with my head here. Finally, number six, effortlessly transition to advanced inside fighting setups. This position is the perfect starting point for a number of advanced inside fighting techniques, many of which I've already covered in a video for short boxing, which you can find here. For starters, the door handle technique where you grab the elbow and open the side door to step around and load your left hand is available. Wait while you get there. Bang, bang, bang. Like, use your elbow or, you know, pull the elbow away, you know what I mean? Like this, just like this, and I'm gonna shove him. If you haven't watched my inside fighting video for short boxing, this technique gives you a handle to help you move and orient your body as you step around, loading up a power punch with the lead hand all the while. And it also makes it harder for your opponent to turn to face you since you're holding them in place. It also works as a kind of hand trap, taking that arm offline for a second. And if you shove the elbow across hard enough, you can really scramble the guard. From this position, you're already in close and lower than the opponent, Instead of trapping with your right hand, just grab the elbow and exit out the side door. 
The chicken wing and shoulder bump techniques are also readily available off of the lead side. Both do the same thing, bumping your opponent back to create room to punch. I go there. Bang. And a little nudge to make a gap. Your distance and choice of hand trap will determine which is best for the situation. For example, you'll want to bump if you have an underhook, and you'll want to chicken wing if you have forearm or L guard control. So that's all for now. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please like, subscribe, and share. And don't hesitate to bring any questions down to the comments section. Thanks for watching, and until next time, stay safe, study hard, and train smart.